Well, it's a strange book about strange ideas. It, um, it deals with the limits of science. Uh, it talks about what happens when, when we reach the limits of science, what happened to the people who reach those limits, and also what lies beyond those limits. It is a, it's a mix of fact and fiction. And, uh, and it's shaped in a strange way. It begins with a text that reads like an essay, but it's not really an essay, followed by two short stories on mathematical discoveries, black holes, and it ends up with uh, two contradictory versions of quantum mechanics and the way that the fight between them shaped our modern world, really. I don't think you can do justice to these stories without uh, using fiction because it is really a book about the limits of understanding and facts are very limiting. They don't tell the full story, they don't deal with the inner lives of the people who made these discoveries and uh, I think most, a lot of the ideas of the book are highly abstract. They're difficult to understand both for me and for any reader and fiction bridges that gap. It allows you to relate to ideas that are very difficult to understand and that are written in a language that most people don't handle. And it allows you to have a, an intuitive understanding of their meaning. If, if you cannot access things through mathematics, which is the tool that the scientists use, most of them, you can use aesthetics to bridge that gap. I think the relationship between genius and, and madness is, is very tenuous, it's, it's, it's overblown. They rarely meet. Um, the things that they have in common is that both madmen and genius can see things, can see patterns in the world, whether they're real or imaginary, that, that normal people or that the rational mind cannot see. Uh, but a, a madman lives in a world of one, while genius they tend to see something about the world that others don't see, but once they've spotted it, it's like we can't look away. It just becomes part of our world. Uh, I think that we shouldn't put too much stress on the relationship between genius and madness. People who are geniuses tend to be obsessive. They may have some traits that are similar to madness, but the only person in the book who's actually insane uh, is, is a mathematician. And I, I do think there is a a very direct relationship between mathematics and madness, but that's a different story. I think the most fascinating character to me in the book is a, is a French, well, he's not French, but he, he lived his career in France. Uh, he's Alexander Grothendieck. He was a man who refounded geometry twice. He was a, and he had a, a, a feeling for the divine. He had this, strong relationship with something that is far bigger than we are and he tried to deal with that in his in his work and I think the close proximity to that thing that to him felt very real uh, and very important may have driven him ultimately insane he ended up eating the flowers that grew on the sidewalk and meditating fasting for so long that his neighbors would have to barge in and feed him so he didn't die. But, and then he retired from mathematics after revolutionizing 20 different fields and he never touched uh, an equation again in his whole life. I think that the shadows that we cast are getting longer because the, the light that we shine on the world is just getting brighter all the time. And uh, it's very naive of us to think that we can make progress that we can discover these fundamental truths about the way the universe works without suffering the consequences. And, and, and I also think that it's very unwise to, to, to see things uh, in such a dual way. I think duality is just hardwired into the workings of our own mind because it's hardwired into the world, into how the world works. Uh, I don't think it's avoidable. Uh, I think we should try our best, but it's not something that we can, we cannot foresee the consequences of things that really change the way that we view ourselves and that 
allow us to do things that were completely unthinkable less than 100 years ago. Well, I think epiphanies come at a high cost. Um, you have to put yourself through an ordeal. You have to risk something. You have to open yourself up to something that is much larger than you. And I think if you, if you, if you do that, um, you, suffer, you could suffer the consequences. But it is something that I am very personally attracted to. Uh, even though the, I think the most in, important epiphanies happen to people who are completely unsuspecting. I mean, you have like a sheep herder in a cave hearing the voice of God and that sweeps across half the planet. You have a carpenter who wakes up and realizes that he is one with the Godhead and then gets nailed to a cross and that those types of epiphanies that just come out of the blue and they spring on you, I think those are the most interesting and also the most dangerous. The epiphanies of science have some of those things in common. But science is about what happens after the epiphany and that is something that I am very much interested in. After the light, after the big eureka moment, what do you do with your life after that? That's what fascinates me.